Well, good morning. It is great to see you today. Don, we got you in the Gallagher seats right up front. We will be bringing your poncho. Rodney will bring your poncho to you in the middle of the service. So, Rodney, great job as usual this morning. We appreciate you, my friend. Bill knows I only harass my friends, correct? I told uh, Becky a minute ago, I said, I love harassing your father. It's great. So he got to be part of this story today. Um, you know, one of the things about Christmas that we don't think about. Now, I, a danger of being a pastor at Christmas time is you always want to say something new. And it's actually one of the dumbest things you can do because it's the greatest story in history. So just tell the story, Brookins, and quit trying to find something new that people haven't found for 2,000 years ago. I discovered something that C.S. Lewis missed. Um, <laughs> So I'm, I'm not that smart. So anyway, but uh, uh, so have you guys ever been uh, surprised by something in life? <laughs> you like that? Yeah. Yeah. You heard yourself, didn't you? And uh, I mean, I can't even drive to Jacksonville without having to take a detour. I mean, it's just that bad it's in, nowadays. And I, I think some of it's just God going, you know what? I, I told somebody, I'm pretty sure the angels have a clicker that has my name on it that says traffic lights. And when they see me coming, the angel's like, Gabriel, your turn. Your turn, Gabriel. Go, 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 go. Do it. Yes. Oh. That one's green now. That one up there is green now. That one up there is green now. Go. Oh. Push it again. Push it again. Beep. Oh. Then I give up and they're all green, right? So the truth is the Christmas story is full of unexpected things. Um, you know, we knew the prophecy of the Messiah and all this stuff, but you would think if you were in the chosen group, whether you were John's parents, the chosen John, the foreteller of Jesus coming, you know, you would think if you were Mary and Joseph who are bringing Jesus into the world, that you would have some kind of, you know, I don't know, fast pass. Right? And yet, unexpected things happen. So I had two interesting experiences that I've never had um, this week. I got, how many of you have ever been to a white elephant gift exchange? So I got to be a part of two of these this week. This week. And it doesn't happen. Usually I'm in charge of the white elephant thing, so I don't play. I just, I'm like, yeah, I just take stuff. I'll see you when I get home. Right? So, but this week, not only did I get to be a part of it, you ready for this? I didn't bring my own gift to either of them. Not, the first one, not on purpose. I, we forgot our gift. Okay, we couldn't find our gift. I'm not going to tell you why, because I'll get in trouble. And, but it's not Kristen's fault, I'll tell you that. So, so we looked everywhere for it, it wasn't there, and we said, well, we're going without a gift. And the the head of the party said, no, 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 even though you didn't bring a gift, you, you're going to take a gift. I, we've got extra gifts. You, you can do a gift exchange. And so at that exchange, I remember looking and thinking, number one, I am not taking someone else's gift. Like you talk about like the most selfish thing you could do. Like I didn't bring a gift, but that looks really good and I'm stealing it from you, right? So I didn't do that, and I thought, well, I'm going to go and get a package. I don't want to get the smallest one, because sometimes that's the best one, right? And I don't want to get the biggest ones, because sometimes... So I'll just get kind of a medium-sized thing, and I got this gift. And here's what's really cool. So I took the gift. I sat down. It was uh, uh, some plates that were beautiful Christmas plates. And, um, and nobody else wanted them, thankfully. Thankfully. Let me tell you why, thankfully. Because my mom loves Christmas plates. So after that meeting, the person who brought them came to me and sat down and said, I'm so glad you got those plates. And I'm like, well, I didn't deserve to have anything. She said, I wanted somebody who would appreciate them to have them. And I thought, oh, right? Second gift exchange. In the second gift exchange, no one brought anything. The host donated all of the gifts. It was the most cutthroat white elephant gift exchange I have ever. Well, I'm going to show you the exciting gift I got. I did not get Make the Pig Fart, which was one of the ones, but I got Farkle, which my mom says you don't have to yell that, 
right? And so, um, but it was funny because uh, Kristen was with me, and they took her gift like four times. I mean, it was like, it was like war, and I'm thinking, none of us, none of the people here deserve any gifts, and yet we're unhappy with our gift, so let's go take somebody else's. Right Now, I understand that's how you're supposed to play. I'm, I'm just being funny. But here's the truth in that. You ready for this? You ever going through life and you have a detour? And you got things that don't go well or something doesn't go right? And you think, that other person has it a lot better than I do. You ever stand at the copy machine? Think, computers are evil! You ever yell at the copy machine? Okay, how many of you, come on, be honest you. Anybody in here gotten mad at their internet? Now listen, my grandfather was born in 1899. He looked at my aunt when he flew to Las Vegas in the 70s and said, when I was young, we had to take a horse into town to buy supplies. It took us a whole day. Then we would get the supplies and come back the next day on the horse. He said, I ate breakfast in Florida and I'm eating dinner in Las Vegas. This is unbelievable. And we go, my plane's delayed an hour. I'm going to die. They put it on the news. And we don't recognize, because we're so spoiled, let's just be honest, we're so spoiled that we're looking at other people's gifts and going, I kind of like that one. Instead of saying, God, this is where I'm at. This is what I have. It's not what I expected. It's not how I thought it would go. But instead of doing what I do and getting mad at every single light, Kristen's like, why can't you just drive? I'm like, because these lights are against me. I'm telling you, I'm going to get to heaven and the angels are going to be like, that was hilarious. <laughs> Michael, your turn. Gary, we'll watch this, watch this. I'm going to wait till he gets to that point that you're not sure if you should run it or not. <laughs> but I'm going to put a policeman there. And he's not going to see it till right before, which is what I did the other day, by the way. Everything in the car is in the front. You hear the stuff sliding. You're like, oh, yeah, I did have a couple things back there. The gallon of milk is now all over the place. I don't know. You ever want somebody else's gift? You ever not like your gift? I'm amazed as I read the Christmas story. Because I would not have told it this way. I would have had everything go well. And yet when you really pay attention to it, a lot of things did not go the way that I would have planned them or the way you would have planned them. And yet when you look at the Christmas story, uh, today we're going to look at the beginning of uh, in chapter 1 of Luke. And you've probably heard chapter 2 of Luke. I think Linus read it. And and. Right, with a blanket and stuff. and I had Mike read it one year. Did such a great job, Mike. I always think of that passage now when I... I always think of you reading it when I hear that passage. But most of the time, we kind of skip over chapter 1, or maybe we read it and you're just kind of like, blah, 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 yeah, yeah, Elizabeth, blah, 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 yeah, she's happy to see Mary, blah, 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 blah. Zachariah sings. Did you know Zachariah sings? Dude can't talk for a year, and then all of a sudden he's singing. He's like the grandpa in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Like, never walked, now you're dancing. What's the deal, right? What's he been faking the whole time? And so we have this story in chapter 1, and I believe that Luke, the doctor, who was not a disciple, but he went to all the disciples and he got the story and put it together in detail. And that's what he says in the beginning of Luke chapter 1. He's pointing out what's going on behind the scenes before we ever get to the manger. God is already guiding. Before everything comes together, God is already preparing the way. 
And the truth for you and for me is as lost as you feel right now, and as much as you feel like your life might even feel like chaos right now, if you will trust God and seek him in the middle of what feels like chaos, in the middle of what feels like this cannot be part of the plan, God is working things together for your good. So I know it's frustrating in between. I know it is. I, I, listen. I would love to tell you that the only thing that I get aggravated about is traffic lights. I get aggravated about every disruption. And I would love to be what, what I talk to the kids about, like, I'm just going to trust Jesus and pray. Now, I may outwardly go, I'm just going to trust Jesus and pray. And then be like, what the heck? God, I thought it was going to be different. And so today as we look at this, I want you to realize that God can guide you and use what he has given you. And you don't have to exchange with somebody else. By the way, their life is not better than yours. You think it is? You look and you're like, oh, I watched Lives of the Rich and Famous with what's his name years ago. Oh, that looked great. And those people are miserable. It's not about what you have. It's not even about... What you do so often, it's about how you respond to what happens. And so today I'm going to talk about three things. How he answers prayer. How he gives grace when we're humble. And by the way, one of the worst things you can do in the middle of a crisis is get arrogant. I don't deserve this. Yeah, right. God knows everything, remember? So you're like, God, I'm such a good person. And, you're, and God's like, mm, really? I was there for that thought. Oh. And then he blesses believers, even in the middle of all these things. So let's look at this. Number one, God answers praying people. And here we go. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him. This is talking about John's daddy. Standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zacharias saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. Normal response of angels. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. I feel like he said it like, oh, brother, where art thou? Do not be afraid, Zechariah. If you got that joke, you really are a hillbilly. All right. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you're to call him John. I love this. He will be a joy. And delight. Now, it's not talking necessarily about 13 to 15. Just saying. <laughs> to you, and listen, listen. But, but he, he says to you, and then he goes from there and he says, And many will rejoice because of his birth. Why? For he'll be great in the sight of the Lord. He's never to take wine or fermented drink. He'll be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he's born. He'll bring back many people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he'll go on before the Lord in spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So Zechariah and his wife have prayed for God to give them a son. And not only are they going to have a son, they're going to have the son that prepares the way for the Lord. And the angel comes and first says, your prayer has been answered. But you need to understand your prayer was not just for you. And this is what God does when we pray. Because a lot of times, if we're honest, we pray selfishly. And I, 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 I've learned from my friend Rudy Moberg years ago to pray honestly and say, you know, God, this is what I really want. I hope it's your will too. And the truth is, if we're honest, we a lot of times pray what our desires are and we hope that God lines up with our desires instead of the other way around, right? God, you, I would love you to do what I want. And so we start out with us and the angel says he's going to bless you. But then he says, but that's not what this is all about. It's bigger than you. He's going to bless other people. And then it's going to bring people back to God. And what's the angel do? He does what God does to us, which is, hey, this is how God answers your prayer. And then here is the focus. The focus is on the many. Watson, I don't blame you. I cry during my sermons every week. <laughs> Watson, you are so cute. One 
What's awesome is right after this, Zechariah says to the angel, basically, you're a liar. Because we wonder why, you know, Zechariah gets punished and Mary doesn't for asking a question. Because Zechariah doesn't ask a question. Zechariah looks at the angel and goes, nope. And the angel's like, fine, you know what? You have no faith, so you don't get to talk for nine months or eight months or how many ever months it is. You don't get to talk anymore. And so Zechariah comes out, and for the next eight or nine months, he plays Pictionary with everybody, right? Before texting. He couldn't text anybody. They didn't have paper and pencil. He's, he's moving his arms, and, you know, he comes out, and they're like, what happened? And he's like, and they're like, what happened? And he goes, oh, oh. Angels in the outfield. No, 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 no. And so all this time he has to do it. Can you imagine what it was like for Zechariah and his wife when Zechariah couldn't say anything to anyone? I don't know about you, but that's not the way I would think the story went. Lord, I'm praying that you'd give me a child. No problem. You doubted. You're going to be quiet for a year. What? And it, by the way, I don't know if that was a punishment or a blessing to his wife. We'll have to fill you that out. When we get to heaven, we'll be like, was that good or bad? She's like, he talked all the time. It was the best thing. <laughs> or she's going to be like, I felt like I didn't have anybody to talk to, but he was a great listener all that time. <laughs> now, I love that God answers prayer. Acts chapter 10, somebody who most likely is not a believer has their prayer answered, which freaks people out theologically. But here's what it says. Uh, uh, an angel appears to this, this Roman guy, Cornelius, and here's what he says to him. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord, he asked. The angel said, now listen to this, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Basically, God noticed that you were praying and you were giving. Have you ever felt like nobody appreciates you? You ever help somebody and it seems like nobody cares? You ever give to somebody and it looks like nobody notices? Can I tell you a secret? You're not giving to them anyway. They're not your main goal. It's not between you and them. It's between you and God. So when you give or when you help or when you serve and people respond in wrong ways, right? You ever had that one? That's fun. I was just trying to help. Well, I hate you now. Great. But can I tell you the secret? God knows. Not only does God know, God notices. And the Bible says that those prayers and those gifts and that helping is an offering to God, not to that person. So quit worshiping them and their response and do what God's called you to do and just do it. Just do it. Do what God's called you. Number two. So not only does God answer praying people, number two, God gives grace to the humble. And this, to me, is the hardest part of things not going the way I want them to. Because I think things should go the way I thought it was going to go. I think every vacation should be perfect. The plane takes off on time. They upgrade me to the best seat on the plane. <laughs> My sister just flew Delta One back from Paris. I said, how was it? She goes, people kept waking me up. And I thought, I'm not paying all that money for people to wake me up. I can do that for free. And so it looks awesome, but then she said, eh, it wasn't what I thought it would be. The truth is, for you and for me, sometimes we look at other people's gifts and we say, oh, that'd be so much better. But God gave you this gift your place to live, your family, the people that are around you, and are you going to use it? And the truth is, when things don't go well, humility is one of the hardest things because I tend to say, well, God, why not? And I tend to try to tell God what to do, right? And that's pride. So listen to what happens next. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, and we all know this part of the story, greetings, you who are highly favored. By the way, this word for highly favored sounds weird in English, but it literally means you who have been given grace. 
You've been given grace. You know what grace is? Grace is an undeserved gift. The angel didn't come and say, Mary, guess what you deserve? No, the angel came and said, grace. And then she, it continues, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words, wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, you have found favor. And once again, there's that word, you found grace with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you're to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. When the angel comes to Mary, Mary didn't say, Finally, I've been living such a good life, you're just now noticing can you even imagine? I mean, that almost blows our mind. Like, wow, that's weird. Now, we have two problems in Christianity with our view of Mary. Some people worship Mary. Obviously, Mary needed grace. According to this verse, according to this passage, you're highly favored. Basically, God has decided to give you grace. Well, imperfect people need grace. Perfect people don't need grace. I don't know about you. I need grace. Anybody in here need grace? Yeah, everybody. We all need grace, right? Now, we're bad about giving it until we accidentally run a traffic light and get pulled over. And all of a sudden, we're the most gracious people there are. Now, if we're on I-95 and somebody passes us, we're like, and we see a policeman, we're like, get him. But if we're speeding on I-95 and we see a policeman, we're like, oh, Jesus, please don't let him catch, right? So we want grace. Why? When we realize we need it. Mary knew she needed grace. Listen to what Jesus says about his own mom a little bit later in Luke. This isn't on your screen, but you can look this up if you want. Luke eleven twenty-seven, 27. And this is the same author. A lady comes to Jesus and says to Jesus, Blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. And then Jesus' response was not, Yep, she's awesome. Jesus could have said, You know, she has her act together. That woman is unbelievable. But this is what Jesus said. Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Jesus said, you want to be blessed? Just do what I've called you to do. Don't focus on her. I know you're, you're making a big deal about my mom, but the truth is, blessed is the one who does God's will. So I want you to make a bigger deal about doing God's will. Now, Jesus didn't say his mom didn't matter. So we can't go to that other extreme of thinking, you know, she's, she's all and everything, but we also can't think, well, she's nothing. That's not true. That's not true. The story of Mary is amazing. I don't know about you. When I got to the end, I would not have been very happy. And yet, Mary treasures all these things in her heart, obviously a righteous woman. In James 4, 6, it says this, but he gives us more grace. That is why scripture said God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. You ever work with a narcissist? Narcissist is a super selfish person that doesn't even care about the feelings of others because why? They're seeing others as a means to an end. I will use others to get my way. A narcissist never apologizes to anybody, never tells stories about their own weakness. They'll gladly tell you stories about other people's weaknesses. We all know one. And if you don't know one, <clears throat> go to a counselor, <laughs> get some help. But the truth is, it's one of the most dangerous things. Why? Because pride can get so big inside of us, and we're so trying to protect ourselves that we begin not caring about others, and we think life is about using others and controlling others. God gives grace to the humble. When we recognize, I don't have everything together. I'm not perfect. I need God's help. And guess what? Other people do too. And grace allows you to forgive other people. Can I tell you a secret about people? You ready? You probably don't know this. That person that you look up to and you think, they have got their act together. They don't. They might more than other people, but the truth is, we all need grace. If you hang around anybody long enough, the most wonderful person in the world, 
At some point, you'll go, oh, wow, they are messed up. You know, I always say people join my group and they're like, oh, the pastor, he's just so spiritual. And then three weeks later, they're like, who let him pastor this church? And the truth is, we all need grace. We're all messed up. We're all broken. And we need to be humble enough to recognize it. We are better through the year for having in spirit become a child again at Christmas time. I love that quote. Number three, last but not least, God blesses believers. Do you believe that God can use you? At that time, Mary got ready. She hurried to a town on the hill of the country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting with the baby leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit in a loud voice, she exclaimed, by the way, if you don't like loud noises, you're not going to like heaven. You need to read the Bible because there's a lot of loudness in heaven. But anyway, I don't like loud noises either, but there you go. She says, she yells, blessed are you among women. This word for blessed here means eulogy. It's the idea of going out of your way to praise somebody or to celebrate somebody. We shouldn't wait till a funeral to have somebody's eulogy. You should do it all the time. But anyway, she says, and blessed is a child you'll bear. And then she says, but why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who's believed that the Lord would fulfill her promise to her. What does Elizabeth say? You're blessed because you believed. And here's another awesome thing. Elizabeth's life was not great right now. Her husband could not talk, which I think was not a blessing. I know that for some of you, you're like, that'd be awesome. She was super pregnant. I'm sure life was very hard for pregnant women. And Elizabeth could have started the conversation by saying, you're only a few months along. You know how bad it is? And this guy over here, he's not even talking anymore. And what did she do instead? She focused on the person and blessed them. Listen, life is not perfect. I don't care who you are or what part of God's story you're in. Your gift is messed up. The gift you have, it's in an imperfect vessel. God pours gifts into us, but you are imperfect. And yet God will use you if you let him. Here's the best gift we have at Christmas time. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So the question today is, what is your gift? What guidance do you need to use it? You may think your gift's not important. One of my favorite Christmas time stories is about a little Down syndrome boy. Many of you know I have a Down syndrome daughter. She's actually in the hospital today. And um, hopefully she's going to get out today, I hope. But it's about a little Down syndrome boy in preschool that was doing a preschool play. And uh, so they went to practice and the mom was worried. So the mom came to practice and she sat and watched. And the little boy was supposed to be, they said, I want you to be the innkeeper and you have one line. Your line is no room in the inn. Got it. So little Mary and Joseph come up in practice and they say, we need a place to stay. And the little boy goes, no room in the inn and walks off. And the mom's like, yes. The night of the play comes, little boy's there, little Mary and Joseph all dressed up. So cute little preschoolers. They come up and they say, do you have a place to stay? And he does his line perfectly. No room in the inn. And Mary and Joseph start to walk off and the little boy goes, wait, you can stay in my room. Now, here's the point of me telling that story. That story has been told tens of thousands of times. I don't know who that little boy is. But can I tell you that thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people have been blessed because of one story? And God has given you a story. And you may feel like your story's imperfect and your sto story's messed up and you can't help anybody. And you can but listen, one day, a long time from now, Somebody will tell your story and how you blessed somebody, how you went out of your way to give somebody a eulogy while they were still alive. And God will use that and he will guide you to that person as you seek him, as you pray, as you humble yourself, as you say, God, would you use me? And even in the hard times, he'll help you find the way. If you're here today and you need prayer, I'll be here after the service. I'd love to pray with you. You may be here today and maybe you're not a Christian. 
You don't understand that verse that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son. So today I'd love to talk to you after the service about what it means to be a Christian. Would you join me as we close in prayer? Father, thank you for this time this morning. I thank you for your word, your strength, your love for us. I thank you for this time together. Bless each one. Lord, I pray we would walk in your guidance, that we would use the gifts you've given us. And Lord, that we'd accomplish what you've called us to do. I pray all these things in Jesus' name.